Let's get a look here at the big picture. What should you be doing with your portfolio? Well, Jeremiah Reith Miller is with us, Chief Investment Officer at 213 Strategic Partners. Thank you for being here. Uh, new highs again this week. Today, as we watch these names, um, the tech trade is back. We're watching the XLK hitting new highs, the NASDAQ 100. Some of your thoughts on where the market could be headed between now and the end of the year. Yeah, I think you have to, you mentioned some of the macro backdrop. I think you have to like that right now. GDP growth has been consistently over two and a half. The inflation numbers have come down. The unemployment rate uh, is around four. I'm not too concerned about that until you get over five. You mentioned the new highs. I don't think investors should be too concerned about investing in new highs. Remember the old adage, um, it's about time in the market, not timing the market. And remember, markets tend to trend higher. So this year's high is likely going to be closer to next year's lows. Uh, so not too concerned if you're a long-term investor about buying into these higher markets right now. Right, understood. Um, what, are, what are you thinking here about the labor market? We got ADP today. We saw jolts with more job openings than what was expected. We have the non-farm payrolls on Friday, um, which are likely to be very different than the last print one month ago. Some of your thoughts on the data picture and what it means to our economy, Fed decisions. Yeah, so... I've learned, look, there's two things you don't fight in the market. One is the Fed and one is the consumer. Right now, you mentioned the, the job market. We're in that 4% unemployment range. We've gotten decent wage growth, inflation adjusted um, even. So at the consumer, I feel like is in a really good spot. So I'm not too too concerned about that. Again, that macro backdrop, I think, is really good for equities. The, the thing I would be concerned about potentially in the short term is some valuations and some choppiness at the beginning of the year. But again... Macro wise, I think we're in a pretty good spot and the Fed, uh, because of where we're at with inflation and labor, likely they're moving very diligently and probably slowly. And remember, they only need to get to 4%, 3.75 to normalize that treasury curve right now. Yeah, understood. You said don't fight the Fed. I mean, the Fed likely to cut, right? I mean, uh, most people were thinking the cut was coming in December. That sort of came now with a question mark a bit. But they have December and January meetings, and a lot of folks are on board with financials. And you also like financials, which have been doing particularly well. Um, I'd love to hear what you think the Fed may do, what you think they should do, and how that goes into investing in financials. You know, do you like a large cap? Do you like regional banks? Do you like fintech? Um, tell me a little bit about how they all intertwine. Yeah, so uh, don't fight the Fed on the way up, right? When they're right, raising rates, don't fight them on the way down. I think this is why you're seeing the tech rally. Financials is particularly interesting to me. Now, you mentioned they've traded higher. So this is a bit of a momentum trade right now. But I think you've got some policy tailwinds potentially next year. Um, you've got rates that are likely going to stay. I think you mentioned the Fed. What's the Fed going to do? I think they're going to go lower, slower. And you're probably at a, at a reasonable three, three and a half, three, seven to five is, is maybe where they stop. So rates, I don't expect to move much next year. So that that's also good for financials. And if you go back and look at Trump trade 1.0, uh, financials were one of the better performing sectors, again, as it relates to policy tailwinds. I think you get some of that in the next year as well. You don't want the Fed to cut too much, right? I mean, you want, I mean, you're talking about a cut, but you don't want them to overdo it. Is that right? Yeah, when I, I mean, right, the Fed's dual mandate is is the labor market and inflation. Well, do we really need to get inflation to to that 2% number? We've gotten it pretty close where it, your, your all items is around three and cores around three. So that to me, that's kind of low enough. Uh, and the labor market is still relatively strong. So when the labor market's strong, I don't see any reason to get aggressive with cutting another 1% from where we are now. Um, my, my expectation would be, let's do slow cuts. Let's do every other meeting, right? 25 basis points. Let's let the market digest that. And I mean, the Fed's going to have to deal with policy uncertainty going into next year too. So I think they're going to want room to work both directions at the beginning of next year. So for investors, you think 
banks are definitely a good area to invest in, right? Is that for the short term, long term, and, and what kind of banks? I mean, I know you went over it a bit because I want to talk about the different investment strategies for 2025, really. And so let's kick it off. The banks would be one. I know real estate was also on your radar, but tell me a little bit about how they should go about doing this. Yeah, the banks, I, I like the, the bigger banks here um, because I one of the other things that I think will be a tailwind for that space is M&A activity. It really stalled out at, at the end of this year, I think just sort of waiting um, to see a where rates were going to go and and b what sort of policy and political environment we were going to be in. So we're starting to see M and A activity pick up um, and activity generally in the private markets, which I think will bode well for the for those bigger banks. The regional banks are also interesting, though. Again, more on the policy side um, and and less restrictive uh, for them. I think is is a big headwind or sorry tailwind for them. So I think uh, the regional banks paired with some of the mega, mega banks uh, is an interesting trade for the next six to 12 months. Yeah, understood. Um, and then for the other areas, you said private real estate would be interesting to you, maybe international markets, developed yeah. markets in particular. Yeah, the, the private real estate's interesting. It's not getting, I don't think it gets much attention. Uh, it, for the last couple of years, it's been, sort of ignored uh, a lot of private investment conversations focused around private credit. I think that's still an opportunity, a great long-term allocation, but I'm starting to get more uh, conversations and portfolio managers that we talk to interested in and starting to lightly pound on the table on, on commercial real estate. Um, some ideas in that space that, that I've had conversations about are the, the multifamily, right? You have rates and mortgage rates that are, that are pretty high relative to, to recent levels. Um, so that's keeping folks in apartment complexes and there's not a ton of supply that's coming on online. So multifamily is interesting. Of course, the data centers, the tech trade there, I think is also interesting. And then in the fixed income space, I think it's right now with yields where they are, high yield muni is, is pretty attractive. You get five, almost 6% yield and high yield muni with default rates similar to what you'd get in investment grade corporates. And on a tax equivalent basis, you're pushing 8% yield right now. Yeah, and I noticed you said, don't fear the in investing, even though there's highs and some of the highs this year, maybe next year's lows. I mean, you're sounding pretty bullish and telling people don't sit in cash, right? You, you want them to get up off the sidelines and put money to work for 2025? Yeah, uh, don't be shy. Uh, keep investing. In most cases, folks are hopefully long-term investors. I, I think in the short term, there's going to be some noise. Some of the, the 2025 S&P 500 price targets that I've seen thrown, thrown out there lately are pretty lofty. I mean, we have earnings expectations are for 2025 or around 15% earnings growth. I like that. But at a 22 forward PE right now, uh, averaging that should average closer to 18. Um, I'd like to see that earnings bring down the multiple and the market not run at the same time. Now it's never that clean. So I, I would expect some short term volatility as it relates to valuations right now as the market digests. Can we actually hit that 15 percent earnings growth hurdle next year? Because I, I honestly think that's a, that it's a bit of a high hurdle. So for me next year, a five to 10 percent return, which is pretty healthy coming off to 20% yeah. years. Uh, that's that's quite the momentum right now. And you're okay with some volatility right now, which you're noting. Okay, good to see you. Jeremiah Reith Miller, 213 Strategic Partners. Thank you.